This is episode 14, a summary of what we know about verbs. So do you remember this table here? Verbs can be broken down into lexical verbs and auxiliary verbs. And auxiliary verbs can be further broken down into modal auxiliary verbs and primary auxiliary verbs. Now we have gone through this in great detail. So this episode is looking at five sentences and seeing whether you can apply that knowledge to determine which of the verbs in the sentences and which of those verbs are lexical and which are auxiliary and what type of auxiliary verbs they are. Now if you find that really easy, you might have a further challenge to see if you can identify the nouns and pronouns too. And I'll go through those at the end. So here are our five sentences. The cat rubbed her back against the chair leg. She is seeing him tomorrow. She will be eating spaghetti. The world is a beautiful place and I like sushi. Now just to give you a little bit of a hint, there is actually only one clause per sentence one verb phrase per sentence. So we can go by the rule that there's going to be just one lexical verb per sentence and up to four auxiliary verbs per sentence. And we will not see an auxiliary verb unless there is a lexical verb with it. So there's my little hints for this activity. Let's go through the first one. I'll do it nice and slowly so you can jump ahead and answer it before me. Number one, the cat rubbed her back against the chair leg. Okay, so I think that the first verb here is rubbed. And I think that because semantically it's something that we are doing, or the cat is doing rather, the cat is rubbing her back against the chair leg. I can also see that morphologically it's carrying the regular past form ED, uh, which means it's happened in the past. Now because it's carrying this morphological ED and there's only one verb here in this, there's, no, there's, none, there's none on this side and there's none on this side, I'm therefore going to say that this is a lexical verb. And so rubbed is verb lexical. Okay, so that's the answer to the first one. Let's have a look at the next one. She is seeing him tomorrow. All right, now I'm going to guess well, I know that is, is definitely a primary auxiliary verb. I also know that it can be a lexical verb too. So I know that it's a verb, now I have to see whether it's acting as an auxiliary or a lexical. So I look on either side of it, and I can see that there's another verb following is. It's a verb, it's ending in ing, so it's got that ending. Uh, it's the verb to see, so it's something that she is doing. So I think that these are two verbs together. Now I know that there can't be two lexical verbs and there can't be an auxiliary verb without a lexical verb following it. So therefore, I will say is is going to be our primary auxiliary verb and seeing is our lexical verb in this sentence. All right, let's look at the next one. She will be eating spaghetti. Well, will, that's nice and easy because I know that it's a modal auxiliary verb. It's one of the few, mo one of the list of modal auxiliary verbs there. So I'm automatically going to say that this is an auxiliary modal straight away. Okay, now we've still got be after that, will be. I don't know whether, I know that be is a form of is, is, am, are, be. So I know that this could be a primary auxiliary or it could be a lexical verb. As uh, so I'm just gonna check and here we go, we've got eating after it as well. So we've got two auxiliary verbs and there's our lexical. So seeing, she is seeing, so we said that was lexical and then he, she will be eating, something that she's doing and it's got the ing on the end, so it's a lexical verb. And so that means that this must be an auxiliary verb. So in this sentence, there are two auxiliary verbs and one lexical verb. All right, let's have a look. The world is a beautiful place. So here's is. Now is can be, as we know, a primary auxiliary or it can be a lexical. So I'm going to look at either side and I can see that it is not a primary auxiliary because there is no other verb in it. It's the sole verb all by itself. And I know that lexical verbs, I'm sorry, auxiliary verbs cannot uh, be by themselves, but lexical verbs can. So I'm going to say is in this situation is a lexical verb. And finally, 
I like sushi. So interesting, I is a pronoun. Sushi is a noun. Well, there's got to be a verb in this sentence, so I'm going to guess that it's like. So I'm going to say that this is a lexical verb because it's all by itself. Okay, so I've used a variety of ways to identify the verb here. I've used elimination by saying, well, it's not the other two. I've looked at whether it's carrying its morphological endings, ing or ed. I've looked at its semantic meanings, whether it's something that it's doing or having or being. Um, and uh, what I haven't done out loud at this point is shown where it sits in the sentence. Um, and that's because we haven't actually gone through the sentence structure or sentence order for verbs at this point. And we will be going, doing that down, going further into that when we do functions. Okay, now I did say that I would look um, and tell you for those who jumped ahead and did the pronouns and nouns, I would go through the answers. So I'll do that now. So cat is a noun, it's preceded by the. Okay, so cat is a noun here. Her back, her back. Her is not a pronoun. So for anyone who did her as a pronoun, this is incorrect because it's not standing instead of a noun phrase because remember that's what a pronoun did. It's actually coming before back. And so it's a determiner. We're going to go through that again coming up too. So if you put her in, just put a bit of a cross there and say, no, nope, not quite um, against not the chair leg. Interesting. So the it's come before chair and leg. Now I know that I can say one chair, two chairs, and one leg, two legs. So I think that this is a noun modifying another noun. So I think these are both nouns. Okay, um, and I don't think that there are any pronouns in this sentence. The cat rubbed her back against the chair leg. No, there are no pronouns in that sentence. Uh, however, she is a pronoun in the next sentence. She is seeing him tomorrow. Well, I think him is a pronoun too. So she could be Annabelle is seeing Mark tomorrow. So him is replacing Mark. So there's two pronouns in that and there's no actually tomorrow. Now tomorrow is an interesting one, isn't it? Because tomorrow can be a noun, but it can also be an adverb depending on uh, its other syntactic, semantic, morphological structures. Now, because we haven't gone through adverbs yet, I'm not going to dwell on tomorrow and accept that. I'm going to tell you that in this sentence, tomorrow is an adverb, but in other sentences, tomorrow can actually be a noun. Okay, so if you put noun as tomorrow and tomorrow is a noun, then you're wrong in this sentence, but you wouldn't be wrong in other sentences. And we're gonna go through that when we look at adverbs. I know it's, it's really hard to know where to start because it all mixes in together, but that's that. She will be eating spaghetti. Well, she, as we know, is a pronoun. We'll be eating, we've already said of verbs, and spaghetti, it's something that she's eating. You can't count on spaghetti to spaghetti, but you could say the spaghetti's curl or something like that. So it does take an apostrophe S. You can say the spaghetti. Um, so I'm going to say that that's a noun. The world is a beautiful place. Well, world comes straight after the, uh, so that's definitely a noun. A beautiful place, well there's a, so we know that a noun is going to follow soon. Is beautiful a noun? I don't think so. I think it's an adjective and it's describing the place. So place is the noun here. And I like sushi, so I is the pronoun and sushi is the noun. So there you go. If you pushed yourself further into that area there and looked at the pronouns and nouns as well as the verbs, then congratulations, there's your answer. So that's a bit of a summary of what we've done so far. Uh, we're going to push on soon. Um, I actually am going to investigate the, the statement, there is no future. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so until then, thanks for watching The Language Code.